The secret formula to being feminine is to relax and breathe. If you want to understand exactly how and why, keep on watching because I'm going to break it down in deep detail for you right now. Let's go. Being feminine is what our culture teaches us, what we unlearn from it and transform into our unique expression of what comes naturally to us as women. Feminine essence is not something that we go out and get. It's a force that is already within us. It's something we become willing to experience, something we admit we have. Your feminine essence is activated when you make certain physical, energetic, and emotional shifts. For example, any time that you are eating a delicious food and feel, mmm, this is so good, you are in your feminine energy. You are connected to your senses and you are sensitive to your body's experience. When you admire a beautiful sunset, when you are in communion with nature, when you appreciate a sensual experience, in that moment, you are in your feminine energy. So why I was never connected to my feminine essence, you might be wondering if every woman has a feminine essence. And the answer is yes. Although most women's feminine essence is their primary essence, many women energetically cover it up, especially us modern women nowadays. And even sometimes it's unconscious since we spend the majority of our day in a workplace. Such a masculine environment requires from us to be in our masculine energy. And then when we come back home, sometimes we just keep on going and we bring the same energy to our home and partner, forgetting that home is a place to be soft, delicate and tiny. There are also other factors like the environment, where you grew up, or situations that have forced you to become hard. Maybe you grew up in a dangerous neighborhood. Maybe you were raised by a masculine single mother or grandmother, that was my case, with a lot of boys. Maybe you have been hurt in life and you had to toughen yourself up and build a shield around your vulnerability to protect yourself. Some of us never learned about or were exposed to femininity. Maybe you grew up in a home without a mom, either your mom passed away, or you grew up in, with just a dad, or you don't have a good relationship with a woman in your family, either mom, sister, aunts, and grandmother. They might be even narcissistic. Other women might be very present and love you, but will just not have that level of femininity to give. Maybe life was hard for them and they felt that the best thing that they could do for you is to teach you to be strong and independent so you are prepared for the world. In that case, it's absolutely done with the best of intentions. But learning how to be strong doesn't mean that you always have to be. If you have never been able to relax and let go, are goal-driven, perfectionist, tense, efficient, and unable to fully surrender in an intimate embrace, then you are someone who is rejecting their own feminine essence. And let me tell you that it's completely normal to have a hard time trying to figure out how to soften up into your femininity. You are who you are based on your circumstances, your genetics, and the things that have happened to you. A lot of times we move through life and we hold on onto these things that happened to us, that people that we love, trusted, and maybe even our livelihood dependent on, told us, becoming interjections that are the unconscious adoptions of ideas or attitudes of others. If you are wondering what interjections are, is this is that judgmental voice within you that seems to be ruling your life, 
that has an opinion and criticizes everything you do, including the air you breathe. She strips away who you really are, slowly and over time throughout our lives. That is why as women, reconnecting with our feminine essence is a paramount aspect of our healing as a species for all humankind and of our purpose here on earth that requires that we build ourselves back up so we don't live in a place where we are reacting to everything anymore. It's important to keep in mind that if you have been guided here, it's because you are ready to do the work and it will require all of you because being from your feminine essence requires a new version of yourself. If you just try to add this way to your life, it will not stick because it's a transformation, a metamorphosis, a becoming. You have to reconstruct your entire essence as a woman, especially if you know that there was trauma in your life. Femininity allows you to rediscover yourself to reinvent and rebrand yourself as a feminine woman. When you have the intent to learn about loving yourself and you are connected with the love and wisdom of your femininity, you are your true self. When you start embodying your feminine essence, you will experience some resistance from the people in your life. This is completely normal, just as when your favorite product has a new label, a new font and new colors. You complain about how you miss the old packaging, but you don't change who you are in terms of the old person you are becoming based on what someone else thinks. They either get used to the new you or disappear. Now, I want you to take a deep breath and reflect on how do you feel about your own feminine essence. It's important to recognize where you turn it off or at least turn it down to begin with. By looking at the negative messages and untrue stories that have been told over the years about the qualities of the feminine, we can acknowledge them, forgive them, and choose a different story, a different belief. Femininity is a spectrum. Locating where in that spectrum you are and enhancing it, that is what you want. So. What do you have to do to be feminine? To do nothing. Femininity is all about being and embodying. It's about becoming aware of your body, to feel your body and be in constant conversation with her. Femininity is definitely a lifestyle. In my family, I learned to be compliant, to be a compliant child who took care of everyone else's feelings. I was always vigilantly aware of others' feelings, but completely ignored my own and was therefore unaware of what was going on inside of me. It took me a lot of practice to learn to be present in my body with my feelings. Most of us learn to disconnect from our feelings because we could not manage the pain of abuse, neglect, bullying, rejection, or loss, or of not being seen, valued, and loved in the way that we needed to be loved. As a result, we also lost access to our God feelings, our inner knowing, our intuition, as we learned to numb our emotions in order to survive the pain of our childhood. This is why embodying your feminine essence begins by learning to move into the present moment, learning to focus within and tune into your feelings, tune into your body. It's about practicing moving from mind focus to body focus so that you can be aware of your feelings moment by moment. It offers a mindfulness practice that begins the process of opening you up to receive the positive energy of life that is here to enliven and sustain you. 
When you reconnect with your feelings and your body, you gain an inner guidance system that lets you know about your intent when you're abandoning yourself, what is right for you or what is wrong for you, and whom you can trust and whom you can't. Painful, wounded feelings or any lack of inner peace lets you know that you are abandoning yourself, while peaceful feelings let you know that you are loving yourself. When you learn to lovingly manage the existential pains of life, you can even learn to stay inwardly peaceful in the face of losses and others' unloving behavior. Being feminine is to remember that there is nothing outside of yourself to do. It's simply a matter of relaxing and allowing what is already true of you. Just relax into your heart, your body, your womb, and breathe. You will be surprised at how simple it is. And in relationship to men, the natural feminine force is the attractive force. There is nothing that you have to do to make it so. If you walk into a room filled with men, you will feel this charge of polarity. You notice that your presence caught attention and you can feel the eyes on you, right? It doesn't matter how many times you have been told that you are unattractive. Your natural feminine radiance, your relaxed happiness and your opening, your open feminine heart are expressions of universal feminine energy. The attractive force is simply true of you. If you choose to relax into your body as a feminine expression of human life that you are. So let's bring it to earth and break it down in six traits of an embodied feminine woman plus five action steps that you can take right now. Let's go. The number one trait of an embodied feminine woman is that she is connected to her intuition. We talked that a woman who embodies her feminine essence is aware of her internal experience. She often looks inward to her physical, emotional and energetic body to guide her. She waits for the right time to make a choice or a change. Because she's attuned to her intuition, she does not feel the need to rush ahead or even to struggle to achieve her goals. The rhythm of the feminine is slower than the usual pace people move at. A woman in tune with her feminine essence is more in joy, flowing with the sensual beat of life, rather than always on the go looking to get ahead. So how can we put this into practice? I started to intentionally walk slower. This is how I started, even if I am in a rush. As I am intentional about it, I'm constantly noticing and catching myself walking fast, very decisive to get somewhere to to do something in my own house. It's amazing how I default to rush. So by bringing awareness to my fast pace, I automatically slow down the pace. Even with my own resistance and arguments that I need to do this fast or there's no time, as I slow down the pace, it's like time slows down with me and I move more my hips as I go and I notice the things that I pass by on my way to the kitchen and somehow my mood improved because I really enjoyed walking this way. This is one of the amazing gifts that reconnecting with my feminine essence is gifting me. Presence. In any moment of the day, we can choose to become aware of what we are being. Am I being patient? Am I being loving, supportive, open, or am I being annoying and defensive? Rather than simply being aware of what we are doing. What brings me to the second trait of an embodied feminine woman that is being 
not doing. The feminine essence is not focused only on doing to accomplish and create what it wants, but it understands that the power of being. The feminine essence is not focused only on doing to accomplish and create what it wants, but it understands the power of being. What we are being is something that comes from within us rather than something external we do to make something happen. A woman embodying her feminine essence does not have to control her environment or push to make something happen. She's much more in love with the process rather than achieving a fixed outcome. And so her power comes from a natural responsiveness and not a direct independent action. A woman in her feminine essence knows that before she walks into any room, all she has to do is choose to feel her compassionate nature, her charm, her patience, or whatever the moment calls for, and it is with her. Her state of being automatically affects what comes out of her mouth, who and what she's drawn to, and what type of impression she leaves. The third trait of an embodied feminine woman is to be open to receive. The feminine is the receptive power. The feminine essence opens to receive, whether that be emotional support, insightful guidance, help getting things done around the house, or favors that can help her expand her business. Unfortunately, being a person that is open to receive, it's easier said than done, especially for most women. We have been conditioned to give, 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 and if that were the way to be valued and loved, if you give to your man, give to your kids, give to your work, give to the household chores, give to any friends in need, give to everyone except yourself, you will be a good woman. There is much power in being open to receive. In fact, masculine men are much more drawn to women who love to receive their gifts, women who readily display that they have room in their life and a need for a man. Think about this the next time you don't want to show gratitude to a man who opens a door for you or wants to help you in some way. If your habit is not to accept or ask for support, you are cutting off one of the most attractive forces the feminine has. There are many examples of empowered women who allow men to support them. The fourth trait of an embodied feminine woman is inner radiance. The feminine qualities include the ability to give love, nurturing, and bring radiance to life, which attracts people into their bodies and their hearts. The more a woman does this, the more attractive she is to her men. Men are always attracted to radiant women. Radiance does not depend on a specific physical features. Radiance is the beauty which shines from a woman's happiness. It is the shine of her love. Some of your special gifts to your man as his chosen woman are energy and attraction. You attract him towards life by your radiance and give him the energy to endure the crucifixions of life through the power of your love. Your gifts of energy and of radiance of attraction may take the form of your genuine smile, the look of love in your eyes, your touch, anything that fills his body, mind and emotions with energy, love and life then he feels you as his source of the light in an otherwise burdensome world. The fifth trait of an embodied feminine woman is zero pressure energy, because when there's pressure, the unconscious mind sees your desires as life or death. What is created from pressure only attracts more pressure. Pressure puts you into fight or flight mode, which is survival mode. And survival mode leads you to creating a life of survival, not one where you thrive. So wondering, 
following clues unattached, enjoying the ride, it's zero pressure energy. And zero pressure energy is where everything is magnetized to you. Let go of the, I need this, this has to happen, I should have, I have to. Let all of that go and surrender to that which you can not control. Set your intention and allow the universe to bless you best case scenario. The sixth trait of an embodied feminine woman is living according to your menstrual cycle. Menstruation is the consequence of not having conceived. For menstruation to appear, we must have ovulated and our body must have failed in its consentive confabulations, being forced to destroy and expel the endometrium it had created to support pregnancy. The menstrual cycle and the reproductive cycle are two sides of the same coin. We call the failed attempt to conceive the menstrual cycle and the successful attempt the reproductive cycle. You must realize that ovulation always ends in one of the three processes of evacuation of what is inside of the uterus, menstruation, abortion, or childbirth. When we menstruate, we expel the fertile soil in which the fertilized egg was to implant. When we miscarry or give birth, we expel the fetus or baby and the structures we have created to support the gestation, sac, amniotic fluid, and placenta, if they have had time to develop. Women menstruate because each month our body prepares everything to conceive and carry a baby. Regardless of your plans for the future, <laughs> from the first to the last period, that is about 40 years, your body is constantly plotting to conceive. Our culture has disassociated menstruation from the reproductive fact. That is to say, few women keep in mind when they menstruate that the period is the end of the effort to conceive that their body has made during that cycle. When they observe menstruation, they do not think that this blood is the result of the creative act that is ovulation. They do not think that it could have been the cradle of their baby. Women menstruate without valuing their menstruation and the great power they have for being the humans who give life, who gestate human beings, who nurture them, who carry them in their wombs, in their arms and in their backs. In our culture, this power does not have the immense recognition it deserves. If we do not keep in mind that menstruation is part of the miracle of life and death, the period, of course, will seem to us like a useless whim of nature. The length of the menstrual cycle is variable and changes depending on many environmental and personal factors. Most women have cycles between 24 and 35 days. Some women are very stable and almost always have cycles of the same length, but many others do not. There are life stages in which cycles tend to be irregular, that is, in which months pass between one period and the next, that is, adolescence, postpartum, and climateric. There are also women who have periods in their lives when they experience irregular cycles for other reasons. In any case, no matter how regular you are, you will never know the exact length of the cycle you are in until you ovulate. Because the phase from menstruation to ovulation, that is the follicular phase, can lengthen or shorten. On the other hand, the time between ovulation and the next menstruation, the luteal phase, is always stable and it takes about two weeks. So the menstrual cycle is governed by ovulation. If we learn to detect ovulation, we will always know more or less when our period will come. 
which brings us to the cyclic dance. The hormones that orchestrate the menstrual cycle and the reproductive cycle not only modify your sexual organs, but make your whole being dance to their rhythm. Body, mind, emotions, sexuality, spirituality, social relationships, needs. All of you changes depending on the phase of the cycle in which you find yourself. Women live in constant transformation during the 40 years that the fertile stage lasts. A transformation similar to the one that nature undergoes with the seasons of the year. In each phase of the cycle, we enjoy the opportunity to experience life in a different way. Unfortunately, no one has taught us to know and appreciate our cyclical functioning. So most women struggle to remain stable rather than cooperate within. The menstrual cycle and the reproductive cycle are natural cycles that cannot be changed. We must adapt to them and enjoy the gifts that each of their faces brings, just as we do with the seasons of the year. No one complains that it is not possible to contemplate to play with the snow in summer or have a beach party in the middle of winter. No one questions the cyclical functioning of nature. What we do is to take advantage of activities that allow us to make the most of this cold season. In the same way, fighting against women's cycles is a path of frustration and a cultural absurdity, really. In our culture, we feel that the arrival of menstruation ruins the best plans because we do not take it into account to organize them. Since our mothers and the whole society have taught us that the period should not change anything, that you should go on with your day-to-day -day life as if nothing has happened. However, menstruation does change our state and needs. So it requires that in the same way that we adapt our plants to the seasons of the year, we also recognize them depending on whether we will have our period or not. We menstruate one week a month, which equals a total of eight years if we add up all the time we have our periods throughout our lives. So either we learn to adapt our lives to menstruation or we will spend eight bitter years fighting for the impossible. Now I want to invite you into a minute meditation to open ourselves to receive the next information. There is nothing you need to do, just close your eyes and center yourself back to your breath and imagine a warm light filling up your whole body from the top of your head to your chest to your womb and all the way down to your feet Breathe out any tension from the day. In this space, you are protected. You are safe. And you are divinely held. You are loved. And everything you want is coming towards you. It's attracted to you. Thank you for joining me in that. So now let's explore how we can take action on developing these traits. It all comes down to one word, softness. So action step number one is to look soft. So taking time to learn, understand, appreciate, and utilize all the things that make you unique as a woman. This includes being aware of all the features we come with, 
as well as truly understanding our strengths and weaknesses. It means that you are paying attention to all aspects of your body. You are here now, fully present. Hands, teeth, face, clothing, shoes. You apply lotion after you wash your hands. Skin routine, face mask, you get a facial. You use serums. You pay close attention to your hygiene. Your skin looks even and hydrated. You nurture your skin. You put lotion on your skin. And here I know most of you, like myself, I have acne and rosacea. And let me tell you that in my experience, having a skin routine and moisturizing consistently is vital for getting best results. So you shower as many times as you need. Your clothing, the colors, hair, nails is done to make you feel good primarily and also to represent yourself. Colors, I think, are so important on how they impact your skin, how it highlights your radiance and makes a difference on how you are perceived. I am extremely color sensitive. Colors, um, they generate sensations within me. And what I can share with you about that is that the most important thing to understand about colors regarding our persona is that your favorite color might not be a color that looks good on you. You can love the color and use it as an accent or for details, but not as a primary color, especially next to your face. You can also develop a signature look a combination of your hairstyle, your features, makeup application, or even lack thereof for your personal daily life. Your signature look should be the one that you look the best with the least amount of work. Because if the look that you like takes hours to do, it becomes much less likely that you will be inclined to do it um, every day or even most days. Have the mindset of, why not look my best every day? Like, why not really? Why only is something reserved for special occasions or for when other people see me? Why not just be my best for me? Also, a signature fragrance captures your personality and vibe. People remember your scent. So don't be surprised when people start treating you like a delicate flower and you start to receive preferred treatment at work, shopping, at a restaurant, or anywhere else you may be. It means you are embodying your softness. Action step number two, soften your movements. Faces are stiff. We don't want to let go. And I cannot tell you how many times I catch myself in a hurry and my mind is ruminating on negative thoughts and I am somehow contracting areas of my face, mostly my jaw area, the eyebrows, mouth. As I guide myself to relax the muscles and take a deep breath, my face come back to her natural raised state. And it feels like those contractions in my face were creating a really, a really scary looking mask. I can see it in my head and I acknowledge it and I am so happy I, I can let it go because the mind starts ruminating on painful memories or negative thoughts. Our body then goes into survival mode and the anger and resentment surfaces physically as a mask over your face, as contracting, frowning, like stuck on an expression of the thought that you were thinking. We have done this for many years and it has become our unconscious way of being. Softening your movements is a great way to dive into your feminine essence and at the same time heal the trapped traumas in our bodies. Dancing, stretching, stretching in the morning and evening, more grace when you move around, get massages, paint gracefully, start looking things from a different angle, have more flexibility, take your time walking to the store, smiling softens your way as a woman, drinking slowly and appearing friendly. Action step number three, 
soften your mind. You know that your mind creates your reality. You are being aware of all of the things that impact the way that you think. You feed your mind with things that elevate it. Mind friendships, partner, people from the past that bring you down to a past version of you that you're not anymore, people that do not support the kind of woman you want to be, books you read, people you follow and watch on social media. Watch out from the drama-driven people because you catch it. Stop watching people that is masculine and aggressive. Step away from the things that are hardening you as a person. Kindly remove yourself from places that do not embrace who you are. Action step number four, soften your spirit. Everything flows from there. Renewing your spirit, your personal relationship with your soul, with the goddess within you, with your womb, with your inner child. If you want to be a different woman, believe that you are worthy. Hug yourself every morning. Give yourself the safety that you so crave. In order to really be soft, to embody your feminine power and confidence, you are going to have to love yourself and love people and genuinely care about people, plants, animals, and life. Being willing to become aware of your feelings, face them, and accept them can open up new possibilities in life because we're not longer driven by avoidance, which leads to painful situations, in addition to painful feelings. We can truly be with ourselves and with others. False beliefs also limit your frequency and therefore your ability to connect with your feminine energy. Often these beliefs are background noise, subconscious junk thoughts that create your wounded feelings. Becoming aware of your limiting beliefs, false beliefs, and learning to access the truth is vital for raising your frequency and being able to access your feminine energy. Action step number five, soften your tone. You understand and know the power of your words. Watch the way you speak. You are speaking your reality into existence. Your words are spells and they are sacred. Your speaking should flow like a cool, nurturing tone. Your tone of voice can change a conversation that is becoming an argument. And I know it's hard especially for us, mother women, to have to listen to things that do not make any sense, gaslighting, narcissism, dumb excuses. There might be some things that your partner says that trigger you and you just want to answer. It comes so strong that you cannot even breathe. You speak over yourself. It's intense, I know. But those are exactly the moments when you need to become aware of yourself in that present moment and actively choose to listen and learn, to use nonviolent communication and repeat back to them exactly what they say and ask if you understand it correctly. This will give you the time to shift from a trauma response to a place of wanting to learn what the other person is trying to communicate. A lower tone, deep breaths, and a slow flow of words makes it really hard for people to get mad at you. The feminine essence is the power of unity, connection, and relationship, which weaves all of creation together rather than just focusing on the individual. A woman living in her feminine essence longs to connect with what's around her. She wants a relationship. She wants to love and be loved. I personally have a well-developed masculine essence because I mastered the art of survival through it. And I love to lead my business and I enjoy life when I accomplish my goals. However, my deepest longing is for intimate communion. When I am truly honest with myself, I acknowledge that above everything else, what my feminine heart wants is to connect with others in a deep and soulful way. That's why the Boss Babe wake up call happened to me. If you haven't watched the video, I'm going to leave the link right here. 
and I am so grateful for it. It came to me as a panic attack that stripped me of my career my title, and everything I achieved as a professional woman, the meaning I was giving to life, uh, it has been a beautiful journey. So what is the only thing that you need to be feminine? You need a safe environment to express your femininity freely. Also finances, being financially stable allows you to be in your femininity. So what now? What I want you to do as soon as you finish this video is this. Write down all the masculine behaviors you have recognized in yourself and set an intention to stop them. Then reflect on what actions can you start today to soften into your feminine essence. Let me know which action steps are you putting into practice in the comment section. You will get there. You will be able to unravel all of the pain that has happened in your life and you will be able to blossom, nurture, comforter, creatix, life giver, beauty of the world, that is what you are. One of my goals is to help you to trust that consistently living in your feminine essence will lead you to life's greatest pleasures. Don't allow society to strip that from you and know that you deserve to be able to be comfortable in your womanhood. You deserve to be taken care of and that you deserve to be beautiful. I hope this video resonated with you and if you know someone that could benefit from it, please do share it. Until next time. Okay. English. Pause.